I'm gonna tell you some things you don't know, right? I don't set up open. The trick to figuring out good bunker play though is learning about sand displacement. That one's gonna be spinning. Woo! Well, all right, gang, so we're out here on the golf course. We just talked about hitting a shot, playing smart, little course management tip for the day. And I hit one in the bunker. Through. I don't think I've thrown a bunker lesson up there in a while. So we're gonna cover some bunker basics. Talk about what we got going on here in front of us. Before we do, like and subscribe, help your brother out. A little tap on the shoulder, tell me what you want to see. If you got a problem, send it in. I'll see if I can give you a little something to help you out fixing the problem, right? So, here we go. We got an elevated shot to the pin. We got a little bit of backstop behind it. You know, we have a little bit of fluffy, fluffier sand, softer sand to get through, so it's not too bad. We'll talk about that here in a minute. So, let's get into the video and let's uh, make you a little better bunker player. All right, gang. So as you can see, the green's higher than my head. So I've already messed up a little bit because this isn't where you're supposed to be. Short right, no good, right? But name of the game now is recovery, right? First and foremost, anytime you have a wedge in your hand, I do not care how good you are. Ball's on the green, priority one. The better you are, the closer you're thinking about hitting it, right? But if you're a 30 handicapper, 20 handicapper, boy, do I need you to be good at just putting it on the putting surface, right? So. Let's talk about some things that are gonna to have to happen when you're in the sand, right? One, most unstable surface that you play on is the bunker, so you need a wider base. That's why we have our feet wider than our hips. So we have that big base to support ourselves while we have this unstable platform, right? Number two, we don't touch the ball, we touch the sand, right? Obvious one, but sometimes we struggle with that. But the key here is you have to splash sand. now. The trick to figuring out good bunker play, though, is learning about sand displacement, right? That's the ticket, right? What does that mean? It's a big word for a Mississippi State guy, right? But sand displacement is figuring out how much sand am I going to throw out when I hit this bunker shot? Is it easy to throw a lot of sand or is it hard to throw a lot of sand, right? Don't know yet. We have to give it a whirl. So what we're going to find out is can I throw a lot of sand out out of this bunker, which most of the times in our case is a yes. There's a lot of sand, it's fluffy sand. And the best way I was heard uh, described to me was that they're like little marbles in a jar and we have multiple sizes. They lock up to get tighter and it's more firm, more compact. When they're all the same size, it's loose and unstable, right? Ours are all very similar in size. It's very loose, very unstable, very fluffy. So we have to be careful that when we splash it out, we could potentially splash out a lot of sand and that might affect our ability to keep the acceleration in the club head. So in these scenarios, I'm really thinking about thumping and blasting as much sand out as I can, right? To ensure it gets on the putting surface, right? So we're not trying to pick it clean in this scenario where if I had hard compact sand, that's what I'd be doing, right? So I'm sure all of you heard all the, the, the rambling ons about open the face, open your stance, all that crap. If you ever watched a YouTube video, I'm sure you've seen it. I'm gonna tell you some things you don't know, right? I don't set up open, I set up square. And I open my stance wider, but I open my lead foot so I can turn into it a little bit better. But I set up relatively square to my target. I don't set up wide open because a lot of the times that creates shaft lean and handle drag where the golf club will come in this way and will catch that leading edge first or the hosel and blade it into the lip. So when I have to throw the ball airborne, I set up more square with the face open. And then what I'm trying to do is return it back so that it looks to the target, right? So if my face is set wide open, I'm trying to return it so that now it's square, but there's more loft on the face, right? So it feels like I'm hitting a hook, not a big cut shot, right? So we get wide in the feet, it's relatively square, pressure forward, and then I'm trying to think like a little draw blast shot. Yeah, it worked out pretty good, right? So that gets away from the swing it left mentality because in these scenarios, I need loft. If I drag the handle, that takes loft off, right? So I want to set up square and try to return it. And it's okay for you flippers out there. This is your time to shine, right? Let the club head win, right? But impacting the sand is the most important part in the right place. If I hit the sand too early, which I have wholeheartedly seen, where people enter the sand and hit the golf ball on the way out of the sand, that's no good. We still wanna catch the ball 
well, technically the sand, while the club's still traveling down, right? We don't want to go through the sand and get the ball on the way out, right? So we'll do it again, right? Now there's different styles to hitting bunker shots, right? I'm kind of a long, lazier type. I'm not the short and explosive type a lot of times, right? Unless the situation calls for it. Oh, I thought that might have gone in for a second. But that's up to you. That's a player preference, right? If you're like the long, lazier swing, long, lazier swing, you can keep that action. I don't care. That's fine. If you're short and explosive, it tends to be a little harder when we're trying to hit it high over a bunker, right? So the last little nugget I'm going to give you is I'm using my 58. I tend to want to feel like my finish goes up in front of my face more when I'm trying to keep the shot higher. So I will feel like I'm finishing more up this way than if I'm trying to hit something low, I go more around, right? So again, I feel like I'm finishing up in front of my face, got a little bit of a hook pattern, hitting just behind the ball, wide stance, not open to my target because I'm trying to return the face with a bunch of loft, feeling like I'm hitting a hook. So I put a bunch of loft on the face and I get up over this lip real easy. That one's gonna be spinny. Woo! And then again, if you wanna spin it, less sand, less sand, less, less things in the way, more friction you can put on the face of the golf ball, hit some spinnier shots, right? So again, coming down to the bunker, things to remember is one, you don't have to set up open. You can set up square and if you set up square with the face open, you have to close it by throwing the head in front of you a little bit, feeling like you're hitting a hook to put a bunch of loft back on the face. You do that, maybe we hit some solid bunker shots, right? Interaction with the sand depends on what type of sand you're hitting. If it's firm and compact, that's gonna change the shot. We have big fluffy stuff, so it's really thinking about blasting a lot of sand. We want a lot of sand to go. And then like that last shot, I picked it kind of cleaner just to show you that there's a lot of different ways to do it. Even if it's big fluffy sand, I can control the arc and how low it interacts with the turf to take a little less sand. I'm still, in, I'm still engaging the sand two or so inches behind the ball. I'm just not going as deep when I hit the shot. So keep that in mind when you play some bunkers, right? Like I said, I've heard, I'm sure you've heard all the gamuts of the basics, but maybe there's a little new way to think about playing some bunkers. Have fun. Let me know what else you want to see. Make sure you like and subscribe, guys. Talk to you soon.